So we've talked about the fall of Afghanistan to the Taliban. We've talked a lot about the situation and the lead up to the disaster that we're seeing now. But I want to shift gears and focus on the aftermath. I think that we have to be absolutely clear here. Withdrawing was the correct answer. I agree with Joe Biden. This was the difficult but necessary thing to do. I mean, staying there indefinitely was not a feasible plan. But I mean, if we waited another year, two years, five years, 10 years, I don't think that that's going to change the outcome. I think it was inevitable that the Taliban would regain control of Afghanistan once we leave. I mean, it's hard to nation build in a country that's very different from the United States. Like here, we have a national identity, right? We see each other as Americans. Maybe, you know, you see yourself as a New Yorker or a Californian. I'm an Oregonian. But ultimately, we do still have this national identity. But that wasn't necessarily the case with Afghanistan, right? So in a lot of these countries, the borders were drawn straight through tribes, right? So a lot of people, they don't necessarily feel that national identity that other Western countries feel. They feel more loyal to, you know, their, their community, their family members and their tribes. So to try to create an entire country with all of these differences, it's really, really tough. And democracies are very fragile, especially in the beginning. So I think that basically it was inevitable that the country would collapse. But here's what we've got to do. We've got to make things right. Since we ruined Afghanistan, we need to open our doors to as many refugees as possible to stop as much of the damage as we possibly can. Even though I'm in favor of the withdrawal, it is absolutely gut-wrenching to see the humanitarian crisis, crisis unfold. It is absolutely gut-wrenching to see people, you know, um, be subjected to violence and want to flee, but they're unable to escape the country. You know, anyone who was a contractor that worked with the U.S. government, anyone who served as an interpreter, anyone in the Afghan military who might be viewed as a traitor, anyone who was in a position of power, female judges who are no longer going to be accepted by the Taliban, they have to be granted amnesty. I know that a lot of people are looking at the 88,000 individuals who worked with the U.S. and, you know, we're trying to prioritize them getting their visas, but it should be more than that. We should accept lots, millions of people, because it's only right that we correct part of our wrongdoing. I mean, you'll never undo the damage that we caused, but allowing people from Afghanistan to resettle here is the humane thing to do. It's the least that we can do. But of course, immediately after it was evident that there would be a humanitarian and subsequent refugee crisis, well, the usual suspects on the right were already screaming against that. Charlie Kirk said that he doesn't believe this is a good thing because, um, well, I'll just let him tell you. It's, it's pretty transparent. President Joe Biden's Department of Defense will accept 30,000 Afghan refugees in the military installations following the collapse of Kabul. Boom. Political transformation. Let the country crumble. Do you know there's 5 million displaced people in Afghanistan now? This was all intentional. Joe Biden let it fall apart to now say, oh, I'm so sorry. I guarantee you Joe Biden's speech this afternoon will talk about refugee assistance and relocation support. Now, Joe Biden's going to be scrambling to make good on it, and the liberal media will love it. They'll say, oh, yes, okay, now I get it. Joe Biden is now fixing his own problem. Joe Biden is stepping up, and he's allowing a flow of people from the Middle East into America. Thank you, Joe Biden. You're such a hero. You're so benevolent. You're so respectful. You're so compassionate. Do you see what's going on here? What's going on here is Joe Biden wants a couple hundred thousand more Elon Omars to come into America to change the body politic permanently. We're playing checkers, and they're playing chess. He is this close to talking about the Great Replacement explicitly. He's really, really getting closer and closer to just saying the 14 words. You are disgusting, Charlie Kirk. You are a racist. You're a racist. Uh, Joe Biden wants a couple hundred thousand more Ilhan Omars to come into America to change the body politic permanently. It's not that we ruined the country, so it's the right thing to do to open our doors to people from Afghanistan. No, it's, you know, this uh, motivation to just transform the country 
erase white people, bring in more Democrats. That's that's the conspiracy theory that he is uh, propagating here. Except I don't care what the motivations are. When it comes to Ilhan Omar, I would take a hundred thousand, a couple hundred thousand. Hell, I'll take a million Ilhan Omars in exchange for you. For every Charlie Kirk that we could send to Afghanistan, like if we brought over a million Ilhan Omars, that would be incredible. That'd be based. Ilhan Omar is one of the few members of Congress who actually cares about American citizens, but he's pretending as if that's a bad thing. To bring in more very progressive, uh, humane people, that's a bad thing. And it's not, you know, because of Ilhan Omar's politics. Let's be clear here. It's because she's brown. It's because she's a Muslim. That's what he's afraid about, right? He doesn't want white people to be replaced, Tucker Carlson talked about this, and he doubled and tripled down. But moving on to the fuckwads at Fox News, of course, they were also against the refugee crisis and immediately started their fear-mongering campaign uh, against Afghanistan people coming here. Here's what Laura uh, Ingram had to say. And is it really our responsibility to welcome thousands of potentially unvetted refugees from Afghanistan? All day, we've heard phrases like, we promised them. Well, who did? Did you? Did you? Yes, it is our responsibility. We ruined their country, Laura. So it's only right that we give them the opportunity to rebuild here. Allow them to make America their homes. We need to get out as many people as we possibly can. I mean, the fact that you would be against this. I mean, I'm assuming that she's against any refugees being admitted from Afghanistan because she's just a heartless person. She is extremely xenophobic and she wouldn't admit any if she had her way. But that's incredibly disgusting. I mean, some of these people worked with the U.S. government. Aren't you a patriot? Don't you think that individuals who helped the United States government, shouldn't they be American citizens? I mean, they worked with America. Don't you think that they earned citizenship? I mean, you may not like what they were doing in serving like our military interests abroad, but they still were working with our government and now they're gonna be viewed as traitors, traitors. So if we don't bring them here, well, if the Taliban doesn't honor their blanket amnesty plan, which I don't expect them to, then they're gonna be slaughtered. Is it really worth them getting slaughtered than just like bringing them here? I, I mean, these people are heartless, but Tucker Carlson uh, was also against this, unsurprisingly, take a look. So we're getting it. And if history is any guide, and it's always a guide, we will see many refugees from Afghanistan resettle in our country in coming months, probably in your neighborhood. And over the next decade, that number may swell to the millions. So first we invade and then we're invaded. It is always the same. We'll sp be spending a lot more time on that subject in recent in coming weeks because it matters. Oh, I'm sure you will. I mean, he's so brazen. Like if you watch Tucker Carlson, you should feel insulted because he thinks you're stupid. Like, he used to be a better propagandist, but now he's just like, he's blatantly trying to fearmonger. He's blatantly trying to get you to be fearful. We'll see many refugees from Afghanistan resettle in our country in the coming months, probably in your neighborhood. Oh, that would be terrible. You should be afraid. Look, if Afghanistan refugees resettled in my neighborhood, I think that would be awesome. I would love to speak with them and have a conversation with them. Like when I was going to school. I was in a PhD program with a lot of international students from around the world, and they were the most fascinating people to talk to. Like, their life experiences were different. Um, you know, their, their culture was different. And those conversations that I had with them were fascinating. I would love to have members from Afghanistan in my community. Because guess what? I'm not concerned with the white race being depleted or replaced as these white supremacist assholes are. I'm in favor of the human race. We're all the same. Race is a social construct. And so bringing in people who don't look like me, I don't view that as a negative. I view that as a positive. I think that us learning from people that come from Afghanistan, them sharing their experiences, breaking bread with us, I think that that all makes us smarter and better and more inclusive. But they don't see it that way. Uh, Tucker says, and over the next decade, that number may swell to the millions. So first, we invaded them. Now we're being invaded. I mean, how brazen and shameless do you have to be to frame accepting refugees as them invading us? Because they're brown. 
So we don't want them here. Them coming here is tantamount to an invasion, according to Tucker Carlson. What a despicable person. What a despicable, morally repugnant, morally bankrupt human being. I don't know which one. If you're morally uh, defective or you're just amoral, I don't know what it is. It's a distinction without a difference. You're gross, Tucker. You're a white supremacist. And no, it shouldn't be millions over decades. It should be millions right now. Because again, if we're going to fuck up their country, we at least should let them come here to our country. Let them have a home here. It's not like our country isn't fucked up. But I mean, they shouldn't be subject to totalitarian rule after we ruined their country. We emboldened the Taliban. They now have more weapons than ever. They now have a lot of individuals uh, who were trained by the United States, members of the Afghan military, who uh, are going to defect. So, I mean, the Taliban is stronger than ever, and we did that. So, it is our responsibility to let them in here. But, I mean, this was all predictable, and this is only the beginning of their fear-mongering campaign. And if we end up letting in a sizable number of people from Afghanistan, this is going to be what they base their campaigns on in 2022 and 2024. So be prepared and be ready to push back because this narrative is disgusting and we need to do the humane thing and admit these fellow human beings in because they deserve it. We owe them. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.